The iPad Files app is one of those apps that gets overlooked. I've only made one video on how to use it, and that was a couple of years ago. If you've ever used a computer, you lived in File Explorer if you were on a Windows PC, or Finder if you were on a Mac. The Files app is the iPad's answer to File Explorer and Finder, and in many ways, it's the heart of the iPad. But hang on, this will not be a complicated video. However, knowing how to use the Files app will turn your iPad into, well, a computer of sorts. This isn't a sexy video, but it sure is a practical one. Hi, my name is Rich. I make easy to follow videos on how to use your iPad and iPhone, and this video is no exception. Today, I'm gonna to cover how to navigate the Files app, you know, how to move around, how to view and use different storage locations, and this is important if you use Google Drive or something like that, how to use tags, how to print documents, and then how to move files around within the Files app. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I wanna cover is just how to navigate the Files app. This is the Files app, the little folder icon, and I keep it down in my dock because I use this app all the time. If you tap on the Files app, you're brought to a sidebar over here. If you're not seeing the sidebar, it may be because it's hidden and you can just tap this little icon up at the top and open the sidebar. And here you're greeted with a number of different things. You've got recents, which makes sense. These are just the most recent files that you've messed around with and opened and that kind of thing. You have shared files. And these are files that you've shared with another person and you're collaborating with them on something, you know, like a Word document or a Pages document or something like that. And those will show up here. And then you have locations and you have two main locations here, iCloud Drive. And this is where folders and things are set up on your iCloud Drive using your iCloud account. And then you've got on my iPad. And these are things that are just solely on your iPad. They're not anywhere else. Um, I keep certain things directly on my iPad that I know that I'm going to need when I'm going to be out of internet connection range or that sort of thing. So that's why you might want to have something like that in the on my iPad uh, location. And then you've got favorites down here. I've put downloads in there, and I'll show you how to add favorites in just a second. And then you've got a section called tags. And here you can just create the tags that you want. I've got one called Word Doc. But if you tap and hold the tag, you can change it, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So that's what you've got over here. You can also search for anything in the files directory. And that includes uh, dry, things that are on other drives. You know, if I go to iCloud Drive and I've got a Word document here and I've called it My Word Document. So if I'm up here in iCloud Drive or even Recents or wherever and I just type My Word there, it finds it automatically and you can just open it up. And so this was something that I was working on in Microsoft Word can close that out and go back to the files app so you can search for things anywhere you want you can also view things differently um, if you'll notice we've just got icons here if you tap on the little four squares right there you can choose how it looks you might like it in a list form like this or you might like it in a columns form like this, and I actually like it in a columns form. That's how I've used it in File Explorer on my PC and how I use it in Finder on my Mac. And you can tap on something and then you get more information over here. Likewise, if you've got folders, you can tap on it and then you get a list of what you've downloaded and then you can tap on that again and you get some more information over here. So for me, I like to use columns and that's the little icon right there. But you can use icons if you like that or you can use a list if you like that or you can use columns if you're like me. And likewise, you can sort or group them in a particular way by kind, that's within folders, or date, or size, stuff like that. You can 
uh, do it a little differently. I usually go by name. You can organize your files by just using this little icon up here. Likewise, uh, I like to keep a nice folder structure and you can create folders anywhere you want. So I'm in the downloads folder now and I can create a new folder in the downloads folder and I'll just call it my downloads and I can click done and now I've created a, a folder right there. So navigating the files app is not that hard. You've got recents and shared iCloud Drive on my iPad. Things that you've deleted recently also show up here. So if you accidentally delete something, you can go into recently deleted. I'll show you how that works. If you go into, we'll just go into here and say, we're going to delete this file. I'm going to delete it. And now it's gone. But if I go over to recently deleted, it shows up there. So that is a way to recover things that you've accidentally deleted or if you need to just get in there and rummage around and move something back out. So that's there as well. And then you have favorites down here. If you want to put something in your favorites section, you can tap on it and hold it and just come down to where it says favorite and you can put it there. And now you can just sort of keep the main folders that you want and if you don't want it to be in favorites anymore, you can go back to camera photos and you can tap on unfavorite and then it comes back out of favorites. And then you've got tags down here and you can actually tag files so that you can easily find them again. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But that is how you navigate around the files app. It's really pretty simple. And once you play around with it, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is how to view and use different storage locations. So if you'll notice, Files app has something called locations and you'll see iCloud Drive on my iPad. Well, if you've installed the Google Drive app or the Box app or the Dropbox app on your iPad, and I'll show you that I've done that. I've got Google Drive right here. And I can actually use Google Drive from the Google Drive app. But I like to just go to one location. I don't want to get all confused moving all around. So I want to add Google Drive back to the locations over here. And it's pretty simple to do. You just go up to the little circle with the three dots, tap on it, and click on Edit Sidebar. And here you'll see Google Drive already shows up because it's on my iPad. And if I just tap to view it and then click Done, now I've got Google Drive showing up here. So now I've got iCloud Drive, Google Drive on my iPad and recently deleted. And I can tap on Drive and I've got my folder over here uh, that I have stored on Google Drive. And any other files that I have stored on Google Drive are there as well. It's a great way to have a storage location like that on there. But there's really more than that. If you have an SSD like I've got here. I've got a USB-C connector. By the way, I'm using an iPad Pro here. Not the most recent model, but a newer iPad Pro with a USB-C connection. If I slide that in, and now I've got a drive connected to the iPad, and if you'll notice, the name of the drive shows up over here, and it's called Final Cut Pro Plugins, FCP Plugins is the name of my drive, and if I tap on that, now I've got all of the folders and files that I have right here on my external drive. So you can keep all kinds of information on an external drive and plug it into your iPad just like you would plug in uh, an external drive to your computer, and now you have access to all of the files. And you don't have to worry about ejecting anything. As long as you're not transferring files back and forth, you can simply unplug it, and then it'll go away, just like that, and it's gone. But it's a very handy way to access an external storage drive, and that's another thing you can do with files. So yet, you may have a camera that has an SD card in it. I have a little SD card adapter here. This allows me to pop open and pop an SD card in there like that. 
It's got a USB-C connector on the other end, and I can plug that in as well. And it'll just automatically show up here as my 8 gig SD card. And when I tap on it, I've got some images from a camera that I took. There's something at the beach. And of course, Justin, I've got every picture under the sun of him. So you can transfer these files over to other areas on your iPad if you want to, right from the SD card. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But the whole point of this is just to show that you can add locations to the Files app. And it can be uh, a permanent location like Google Drive, or it can be a temporary location like an SD card or an external SSD. Really, really handy. Wow. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is how to use tags. Uh, tags are a way to uh, locate a file very easily. You can add a tag to a file and that way you don't have to filter through a whole bunch of different things. So if you notice we've got tags down here and I've created one called Word Doc and another one called Turn Paper. If you're starting out you'll have just the names of the colors there. If you want to change that you can just tap and hold on it and you can click on or tap on Rename and then you can name that tag color whatever you want. I've got one called Term Paper here, and if I go into the Numbers app, um, or no, we'll go to the Pages app, I've got something called Term Paper up here, and if I tap and hold on that, and I go to Tags, I'm going to tap on Term Paper, and now I've tagged that, and if I go back over to the tag Term Paper, it shows up, and there it is. And if I don't want it to be in there, I can just go back to tags and I can untag it like that and now it disappears. So you can add tags to any file that you have within the file system and it'll show up over here and maybe you have photos or maybe you have different documents that you want to organize or that you need to get to quickly. Using tags is a way to do that. Not hard to do at all. You know, one of the questions that I often get from people who watch my videos is, how do I print a document from my iPad? Well, first you have to have a printer somewhere, and it has to be accessible to your iPad. So let me show you how to print a document. We're going to go into iCloud Drive, and I'm going to go back into Pages. And if you'll notice, I've got Note Taking, and that is a Pages document. We've got a term paper here which is a pages document. We've got a term paper here, which is a PDF. And if you'll notice, I can tap on and hold on term paper, and I can go to share, and now I've got a choice to print. And I've got a printer set up, and I can choose that printer, and I can just simply print from there, and it prints out on a piece of paper, just like you would using a regular computer. But this gets a little bit confusing when you're using the Files app to print. That was a PDF right there. So the Files app lets me print a PDF directly from it. But if we go up here to the other document called Term Paper, which is the original Pages document down here, and I tap and I hold just like we did, and I go to Share, and you'll notice there's no ability to print it. It's not in here. There's nothing anywhere that I can find that will allow me to print it from there. That's because some documents that you have, you have to actually print from within the application. So if I open term paper in pages, and now we have it here, and I go up to the share button and I tap on that, now you can see I have the choice to print, and I can print directly to my printer once again. But that's the distinction between the two. When I was in the Files app, I couldn't print the term paper document that existed as a Pages document, but I could print directly from the Files app a document that is a PDF document. So there's sort of a distinction there. So don't let that confuse you. When you try to print and you don't find it, then just open the application that the document was created in and then you should be able to print it from there. Pretty handy. A little bit confusing, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be flying. 
Okay, the last thing I want to show you is just how to move files around. I'm going to take my SD card that I've got pictures of Justin on. I'm going to plug it in to the side. And it's going to show up here, and I'm going to tap on it. And now I've got these pictures of Justin. And if I tap and hold, I can go to Move. And I'm going to put it to On My iPad, because that's where I want it to live. And if you'll notice, nothing happens much in here. I've got a place that I could put it in. I'm going to tap iPad Documents. And then I'm going to click Copy up here. I'm going to move a copy of it. So now, if I go to On My iPad, and I go to iPad Documents, there's the picture of Justin. Again, I've moved it, so I can go back here. And sometimes you, can, you don't have to just do them one at a time. You can go Select, and maybe we'll move. I'll just slide down, and I'll choose those. And down here, I'm going to tap on Move. And then I'll go back to On My iPad iPad Documents, and then again I'm going to tap Copy. And now when I go back to On My iPad, my iPad Documents, all of those photos are there. Every one that I just moved in bulk. Another way to do this is just go and hold on that and tap Open a New Window. And now you get the Files app open twice. If you go back over here, we're going to go to On My iPad go to iPad Docs, and maybe we'll just move this photo. I can just tap and just drag it over, just like that. So you can drag anything you want over just like that. So I drag over a photo of me, and there it is. So you can move files around by dragging them just like that, or you can move files around using the menu system. Either way, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty quick. Okay, that was a lot, but the Files app can be the heart of your iPad system, and getting to know it is a great way to make your iPad more powerful. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.